Utah politics. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Glenn Mills. It is time to go inside Utah politics. We do begin this morning with Gail Ruzica. She is the president of the Utah Eagle Forum. Gail, welcome back to the show. Good to have you with us. Happy to be here. So when I ran into you on uh, opening day of the session, you were telling me about some of your priorities for this session, and one of them caught me off guard a little bit. I was a little surprised by, and that is the state food supply. Yes. Uh, something you are very passionate about this session. You say others should be as well. First, start off by painting the issue for us. What's at stake here? Well, I think everybody is actually facing the fact that right now we are in a problem with sustainability of food, of the food chain here in the state of Utah. And they're seeing it in, in the grocery stores, even places where they're, you know, you go to buy eggs and they only let you get two dozen. And, and the same with meat and things. And what's going on and why. And people care about that. And so a lot of it is because of FDA rules and, and things that happen, you know, from the, uh, uh, from the government, the federal government. And so the idea is, is to pass legislation that allows Utah, if they, you know, anybody in Utah who wants to, and we're talking about farmers and ranchers, the ranchers are in real trouble. And uh, if they want to just do their business within the state of Utah and, you know, and, and not, not uh, you know, work with others that are doing the same thing, packing sheds and whatever we, we can get in Utah that will process this food and don't send it outside of the state of Utah, and we buy and sell in, in the state, and, and, and there are so many people wanting to do that, then we don't fall under the federal government. And that's the way to sustain our, our food. And so we've got a bill that would allow that, that would say, yeah, if you want to do that, you can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so you mentioned the FDA regulations that you believe are the biggest issue here, but we also saw this really play out during the pandemic. I don't think mm -hmm. any of us realized how vulnerable the supply chain is until we went through that experience. So there are, are there other outside factors that play a role in this as well? Well, I think one of the things is it has to do with, for instance, the, the meat packing sheds, and, and they're just going out of business all over until we just have a, just the large, the very large ones that are controlling. And in fact, one of the biggest controls of beef is, is coming out of Brazil. And uh, you know, we should, we should be self-sustaining. And that's, that's what we're talking about, being self-sustaining. Uh, and I think maybe you're right about the pandemic made, created a situation where people began to notice that we weren't self-sustaining and they began to notice that, wow, these packing sheds are going out of business. Why, right here in the state of Utah, why is this happening? And it's government regulations and, and, and it has to do with a lot of things like fertilizer and water. You know, the three main things, the most important thing is food, water, and then of course energy. And those are being threatened. We've got water, a lot of water bills this year, one in particular, mm -hmm. and we've got to make sure that we have water. So this bill, which by the way, as of recording, hadn't been numbered yet, it was still right. in the process of being drafted. This bill would essentially pull Utah out of FDA regulations, and then under what authority would govern our state food supply? Well, it, it, it's just for the ones that want to do that. It's just for the farmers and ranchers mm -hmm. that want to participate in that. That uh, it, it is, it, It's not going to change anything noticeably other than there are those who would like to be able to uh, not be controlled by the federal government. So it's just a bill that says for those who don't want to be controlled and they want to do business just within the state of Utah, sustaining that, that food chain right in the state of Utah, they can do that. But, but does that, I mean, obviously we're going to still have lots of people lots that will do business outside of the state of sure. Utah. But this, this is just a conglomerate of people, of businesses, uh, growers, and, and uh, that, that will work together in, in this, in this uh, conglomerate. Okay, I want to learn a little bit more about the conglomerate in just a minute. But I want to be clear, would there be some sort of state authority that would watch over in the way the FDA would on a national level? Well, of course, that, that always exists, and we haven't seen the final bill. Mm -hmm. You know, you, right. the, mm -hmm. the attorneys are working on you know on this bill right now. But that's the idea. That that that's the goal is to be able to work within the state of Utah, and and how that the, how that comes out in the bill, we'll mm -hmm. find out. Tell us a little bit more about this group. Who are they? What do they do? And are there enough of them to really make a difference? when we're talking about long-term sustainability. Yeah, it's just, the, it's just those ones that want to participate. And this started, you know, just a few months ago when we started talking about saving our ranchers because uh, they're in trouble. You know, the, a lot of these big ranchers and, and, and these, these the raising cattle and things, they've had to give up parts of their herd because they can't even, they can't get the water they need, they can't to get mainly fertilizer, they can't, they can't grow what they need to grow. And uh, so 
in the process of doing this, they began to talk about what can we do, what's the problem? Obviously, when you're having to sell off your herds, you're gonna start saying what's happening. Mm -hmm. And so it started probably with the ranchers, and, and one lady said, you know, that's a, a grower, she says, can I bring my watermelons? You know, so it's, that, it's kind of that thing. What do people wanna do? They wanna look at this and see, does this work for me? Can I do better this way? Can I sell my wares better to the people in the state of Utah and then, instead of waiting? Some of these ranchers and farmers are saying that, you know, it's taking them, um, months and months to get to, to get to market when they should already be there. Talk about what's at risk here and why the average Utah should be paying attention to this issue in your mind. Well, we all want to eat. That and is it's, true. It's about food. Mm -hmm. And it's also about water. And I think that, that people are really waking up to the fact that we've got some problems and we need it's time to do something about it. Not, not just to sit around and wait and see what happens, but let's do something about it. Let's see what we can do and let's see if this works. Mm -hmm. And so that's what it is. We're waiting for the bill to come out, and, but there's a lot of people standing in line waiting to do this. Okay, we will watch and see how that uh, plays out. You and I were talking before we started the show this morning and, and you brought up something really interesting that I want to bring up for our viewers. This year, we saw a rapid advancement of some pretty controversial bills right off the top. Uh, within two weeks, a couple of them passed both chambers and were signed by the governor. I had never seen anything like this, but you were saying back in 1991, we saw something very similar. Talk about that. Well, in 1991, we passed what, what was the most restrictive pro-life bill in the nation. And uh, as we worked on that uh, for a couple of years, like things happened, the decision was made by the legislature and the governor that they wanted that bill, they wanted to do that bill first before they did anything else. So they literally just started it right off that first week. It, they had two bills, one coming from the House and one coming from the Senate. And that's how they started them. They passed, you know, and they passed it. They, one came from the Senate, one came from the House. They passed it, the governor signed it, and, and in a week's time, it was law that mm. passed. So like within the first week of the legislature yes, that year? Yes, yes, and it was on its way to the Supreme Court. <laughs> and obviously we know what happened to it uh, in the Supreme Court, but you said it was a feat just to get to where it did. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, you look at how many bills, I mean, how many issues every year actually get cert, get heard mm -hmm. in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. It's very, very few. Thousands and thousands of bills go back, but very few are heard. And that bill was heard, and it was, it was a blessing just to get that far. But there was a change in the Supreme Court, and there wasn't enough to judges, judges to get it through. But we got there, and that was, that was a, good, a good place to be. One of the bills that flew through this year was SB 16, placing those limits on transgender youth here in the state of Utah. Yes. You were actually pushing for a bill that would have taken it further. Why is that? Well, this bill is a good bill. It, 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 SB 16? You know, SB 16 is a good bill, but we had worked for several years on another bill that would have put a ban on all those procedures for all children, not just the ones, you know, not n new ones getting started, but even the ones that were in that process of being using uh, puberty blockers and cross-sex mm -hmm. hormones. This bill has put a moratorium on all new procedures. No, and that by new, I mean starting, new children coming in, and if they hadn't already started before this went into effect, then, then, uh, uh, th then they can't get started. And it's, it's uh, in the bill it said that if two thirds of, of all the House and Senate members voted for it and then the governor signed it, it would go into effect immediately. And right. that's what happened. So mm -hmm. that bill not only went through in a hurry, it got signed the next day and it is now the law in the yeah. state of Utah. Real quick though, why should that decision not be left between families and their doctors, why should the government be getting in the way? We have about 15 seconds left. Well, because this is one of those things that uh, children are too young to make that decision and it permanently changes them for the rest of their life. It sterilizes them. It, and in many cases, through the surgeries, it mutilates them. And they're too young to make that decision. They should not do anything and know it, that will sterilize them and they'll never be able to have children. It also will affect their, uh, how their body functions. It stops them from going through puberty. They're too little, too young to make that decision. They need to wait till they're 18. Okay, we uh, know that a court challenge is likely coming on that, so we'll be following that as well. Gail, appreciate your time this morning. Thanks so much for being okay. here. Okay, thank you.